Hey, welcome back. This lesson is event tick and input access events. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to control the floor actor with our mouse input. To do this, we need to use input access events. We're also going to learn how we can read the input values from our mouse. And we're also going to be taking a look at the event tick. OK, so let's take a look at how we can make use of our mouse input. So let's head into our level blueprint. And instead of closing and reopening our level blueprint all the time, which is pretty annoying, we can actually just take this tab and we can dock it next to our level tab here so we can just switch between them. So where do we find our mouse events? Well, let's come to an empty space on our graph and let's right click and let's come to input again because we're dealing with input. but We're looking for some mouse input. So look, we have mouse events. When we double click here, we can see we've got events for the left mouse button for when you actually click it and the right mouse button. But look, we have mouse X and mouse Y. So mouse X will be when we pan our, our mouse left and right and mouse Y will be when we pan our mouse up and down. Let's get both of these events. So we'll right click again and come to input, mouse events and then mouse Y. I'm going to move my mouse Y just a bit further down just so we can focus in on this mouse X here. So this event looks different to the input action events that we've been using. And this is because this event is an input axis event. Look, if we hover over this event with our mouse, it says this event provides the current value of the mouse X axis once per frame when input is enabled for the containing actor. So what this is saying is wherever this event is, if it can receive input, in our case, it's in the level blueprint and we can receive input because we've been using some input events already. It's telling us that this is going to update every frame and return the mouse of X value. You might have heard of the terms frames per second or frame rate. This refers to how many images are being displayed on our screen per second. And we can view our frames per second by coming back to the level. And in the viewport, we can click this arrow here and we can check show frames per second. OK, so we can see that my frames per second are about 120 frames per second here. And so this means that the mouse X event is going to fire 120 times every second. And every time it fires, it's going to return the mouse X value in this axis value pin, which is a float. And a float or a floating point is a fractional value that has a decimal point and numerous values after it. So for example, this value could return 5.6789. Okay, and we can read the value and print it to our screen by using a print string again. We can right click and search for our print string. And look, when we click and drag this green float pin, we can plug it straight into the string input. And look, it says convert the float to a string. And it adds this node for the conversion. And we can hook up the execution pins together here. And then if we come back to our level and hit play, and if we click in the viewport and move our mouse, look, if we move it left, it goes negative, And if we move it right, it goes positive. OK, so negative values for moving left and positive values for moving right. And the faster we move our mouse or the further we move it, it's going to give us some higher values or lower values if we're moving left. So our mouse X event fires every frame, which means if we're running at 120 frames per second, this means the event executes 120 times per second. And so we have this axis value, which gives us the input of our mouse X movement. And we can read this value by connecting the float value to the input of a print string. And this means when we play the game, we can read the values. So let's take a look at using this event to control the role of our floor actor. So to do this, I'm going to remove my print string and the conversion for the float to a string. And then I'm going to select the floor reference we've got here and then shift select the add actor world rotation function. And if we hit control W, we can duplicate this down and we can plug this to the execution pin of the mouse. 
before plugging the axis value into this, look, we can see that we've still got the value of five on the roll. What happens if we hit play? Well, it's rolling it by five units every frame. Okay, but how can we plug this axis value into this? This is this pin here, we can hover over it. It says it's a rotator, which contains the roll, pitch, and yaw. And we can access the roll, pitch, and yaw individually by right clicking on this pin and splitting this struct pin. Okay, now we have, look, the individual roll, pitch, and yaw, and their float values, which allows us to plug the axis value straight into the roll here. Now, when we come back to our level and hit play, we can now roll our floor actor just by panning our mouse left and right. So I now have a challenge for you. Using what we've learned and using the mouse Y event, I want you to control the pitch of the floor actor. So pause the video here and give it a go. And when you're ready, come back to the lesson. Okay, so to control the pitch of the floor actor with our mouse Y event, we can duplicate this world rotation function and we can hook up the mouse Y execution pin to this function and we need to provide the target. So who is being rotated? Well, it's our floor reference, so we can use this here. And then we want to control the pitch. So we can plug the axis value straight into the pitch. And now when we come back to our level and hit play, we can roll and control the pitch with our mouse. But for me, the pitch is inverted. So how do we fix the inverted mouse situation here? Well, with our axis value, we can edit this before it goes into the pitch. Okay, we can just do some simple multiplication with this. If we drag this out and put in the star sign on the asterisk, we can get a float multiplied by float. Okay, and if we multiply the value by negative one, we will flip the value and invert it, and we can plug this result into the pitch. Okay, and now when we play the game, the floor actor pitches in the opposite direction and we can also roll. So this is looking good. But the more we pitch and roll the floor, you'll notice that the floor actor is offsetting on the yaw. It spins around a little. We will tackle that in the next lesson, but before we move on to the next lesson, I want to show you that there is a much easier way for us to rotate this actor with our mouse input. Let's come back to the level blueprint. I'm going to break the links on my mouse Y and mouse X events just to cut this off for now. And if you recall back when we first opened our level blueprint, we had an event begin play and an event tick that we removed. Let's bring the tick back. If we come below where we've just been adding our code, just so an empty space on the graph, if we right click and come to add event, we can get the event tick. And this is where we can also get the event begin play and a couple of others as well. But let's just bring the event tick back. And look, when we hover over this, it says this event is called every frame. Well, that sounds familiar because we are doing this on the mouse Y and mouse X events. So if we grab the floor reference and an add actor world rotation and duplicate it down with control W, if we just hook this up to the tick and make sure we've got a value just in one of these. So I've got five in the roll. If I hit play, we can see that this is rolling every frame for five units every frame. Okay, so just like the behavior we had before. But how can we use the mouse X and mouse Y values with this? Well, we know we've got the axis values on these events. Okay, but if we right click anywhere, we can come to input again. And where we have mouse events, just underneath this, we have mouse values. And look, if we double click here, we can get the mouse X and mouse Y values. So if we grab one of these, look, it's just giving us the float value. We don't need to call the event as well because the event's doing the same thing as this tick here, it's calling every frame. And we have our mouse value. So really we're doing the same thing here, but only using one event, but we can also get the other mouse value. But before we do that, let's plug this into the world rotation. We need to split the struct and then we can click and drag this into the role. And now we can right click and come to input again, and then mouse values and then mouse Y. And we can plug this in, but oh, we also want to flip the value by using a float 
multiplied by float, we can use a star or asterisk to get this, and then set the value to negative one to flip it, and then we can plug this into the pitch. Okay, so look, we've done the exact same thing, but with only one event, so we've reduced our code. We no longer need our mouse X and Y event, so let's select all of these and remove them. And now when we play the game, we have the exact same setup as before, but with less code. Awesome! So we know that there's different ways to do the same thing inside of Blueprints. In the next lesson, we're going to code even further so we can fix this your offset issue we see when we rotate the floor. So I'll see you in the next lesson.